So, hello everyone who watches the channel these videos. Um, yeah, I thought I would just stop the show you this little video here about uh, the BBC bias again. And if anyone's watched a BBC program called The Click, would be very interested to watch this. This is a se segment where they're on about the censorship of big tech or bit censorship of what you know should be or should not be said about the the pandemic that's going on right now or whatever version you want the fucking predicted to be because it's absolute bull what's coming out now and we're going to be listening to what they say here and we're going to be listening to what they say they virtually turn out to a very big video that they say they can't get rid of the internet cannot get rid of because people keep uploading it and it's false information and people are partly more interested in false information than they are about the truth and they want to make sure the fact checkers are there to stay and there was one specific video and we're going to be talking about the london protest where they actually talked to someone so let's go and take a look at the video right now on my television so let's go and take a look how potent this combination has become Videos from fringe groups with extreme ideas surfacing to the top and influencing users' views. The pandemic has pushed the issue to new levels, with false information about the coronavirus often finding a much larger audience than trusted sources. Because most of the trusted sources are, sources are bullshit. You're trying to tell us graphs that don't make sense, and you're trying to tell us we should go and lock down when things don't make any more fucking sense. And you have the CDC, the O-N-E, or whatever the fuck it is, telling us the deaths from the virus is doing different effects for what it actually can do. It just sounds like a very hard version of the fucking cold. Let's continue anyway. As the months have gone on, YouTube has become inundated with documentary-style films from pseudoscientists promoting conspiracy theories. Not if they're true, like this one here. See, it's it's named uh, Trump knows the truth about Co Colo Coca Cola. I can't call it by its real name. Sorry. Um, yeah, um, that's maybe because Trump like this is videos like they get censored all the time because it mentions the word C O V I D nineteen, and then tech like YouTube will censor it because it doesn't agree with their. Things and if you look at this side, it's got Ted, Valendium, Ted again, Tony Robbins at the side there. You know, it's facts from the front line. You say people are influences a change. This is not one of your best choices to choose from. Plus, if the if we, this doctor is more trustworthy than the fucking ones that you get to put onto the television screen, paid by the BBC, I am not joking. Continue. This pandemic documentary received millions of views. Anyone remember this? Plandemic, that's what it was. Amazing documentary, by the way. Plandemic. And it was actually really interesting to watch. And, you know, you should watch it because it's actually interesting to show how much the doctor here and this doctor here, especially her, this is a fucking credible woman that actually got the information out there. And, my God... It's not a conspiracy theory when we actually think about this and it's absolutely nuts how the information is out there. I don't think I need to tell you how crazy the stuff is about this thing that's going on that's spreading and causing everyone to go absolutely insane and sanity and so on. But you should watch Plandemic. This is a month old, but it keeps getting that re-uploaded, like she's about to say. Despite efforts to remove it from YouTube, Facebook and Twitter, users were constantly re-uploading the clip. Because it's awesome. In recent weeks, demonstrators have taken to the streets in London to promote some of the most popular coronavirus conspiracy theories. May conspiracy theories? No. No, no, no. These people were here for different reasons. It wasn't conspiracy theories. This people were here to anti-lockdown protests. We, they know that. They keep protesting every weekend like they were in every major city and you still call them conspiracy theorists. Where is the Tim Forward hats? I don't see Tim Forward hat people. She doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't. Fucking police officers wearing a bloody mask over there. Okay, really? Come on. We know it's bullshit. 
It's not conspiracy theories when there's actual facts that don't make sense. Continue. Any seen online. A man who would like to remain anonymous got in touch with us after his mum decided to go along. Amazing woman. Mum had two posters. One read, arrest Bill Gates for crimes against humanity. The other had a QAnon hashtag, save the children. She was first taken in by coronavirus conspiracy theories on YouTube, and now she's been radicalised by QAnon on there too. You can't actually say she's been radicalised by QAnon. Yes, QAnon has made some really strange conspiracy theories, but the ones about Bill Gates where you mentioned there, Bill Gates has a lot of cringy name behind Bill Gates. Did he, his company not have to apologise for causing a certain disease to go out in Africa? Did that not happen? Or maybe am I just lying or is it just a conspiracy theory where there's actually a fucking article that tells you what happened? Weird, eh? It's so hard to have a normal conversation. QAnon is a conspiracy theory that suggests President Trump is waging a secret war against satanic paedophiles in government, media and business. I wouldn't say Trump. I would say those people that believe there's a deep state, which is quite possible. And if you're going to fucking bring up the Clinton and Trump thing and the paedophiles is run by the Clintons and some shit like that, you're just going to sound like QAnon where folk don't fucking listen. I'm sorry, that's what you will sound like. Anyway, explain your little narrative. Since the last US election, the social media giants have had a bit of a reckoning. They are all trying to clean up their act to stave off heavy-handed regulation. Facebook with its oversight board, Twitter with more robust warning labels, and now YouTube says it's added a new tool to its arsenal to combat misinformation. Yeah, by censoring the people who don't agree with the social media brands. Facebook is banning people who don't like their opinions, like the Hodge twins. They're black conservative twins, but the fact that they're conservative and black is also the bad thing about it. That's just one example. Many people have been taken offline for getting restriction of the internet of their freedoms. And plus, isn't Facebook a public platform or is it a private publisher? Because they seem to change that word every fucking time. It partnered up with fact-checking sites to warn users if the phrase they are searching has been refuted and pointing them to information by a trusted source. But then, if your trusted source doesn't make sense, why would we trust them? Plus, is the person, the individual, not allowed to make their own assumption of what's going on? Are they not allowed to build a consumption, a reasonable argument from their own research and studies? Or are we just supposed to believe who tells us the information then in, then out? Tell me, who is the one you're supposed to trust? Are we supposed to believe some weirdo on the internet in the San Diego Bay? Or am I supposed to go online, research myself, or try and find out the real story behind the Kung Flu or the Coca-Cola virus? You know? And that's just not one thing. Some of the things about the QAnon conspiracies, it's conspiracies. It's like pedophile glings, which isn't surprising. The, the US did do a drug raid or massive raid against hundreds and hundreds of different children were fleed from sex criminal ganglings, and that was fucking amazing. And do you think that maybe there is some celebrities behind it? Of course there are. Because, I mean... Remember the last few times we weren't allowed to talk about certain celebrities with her sexual intentions to females? Right. Of course. Just conspiracy theories. Okay. Uh, put simply, uh, it's a tool where when users go to search for a particular topic on YouTube, uh, if there happens to be a fact check, these fact checks are generated by third party publishers. So it's not even a liable source, it's a third party. Chief Product Officer. Yeah, and uh, I like the... You had to make sure he was a certain colour to get this interview, didn't you? But I bet I'm not actually offending to his skin colour, I'm sorry, but it, you, you just kind of feel like that when you watch the BBC stuff all the time. Um. Anyway, well, it's a bit weird, that, isn't it? Third party. Third party? Third party usually doesn't have to be involved in a situation, does it not? It's like... It's like the third party rules if, like, in the new Scottish hate bill. 
It's like, you don't have to be in the person who is by directly involved or the second directly involved, but the third party can put the claim on. So any fucker can write any article and just say, here you go, we built this article weeks ago, but we'd put a certain day on it so it looks trustworthy. They can do that. We can do that. But we don't because we trust facts. Uh, that will trigger in uh, the results of that particular query right at the top of the query and it will link out to that fact check saying whether that particular claim is false. Uh, oftentimes fact checking publishers have a rating of that type of claim that will be displayed as well. This is one of the many tools YouTube says it uses to reduce misinformation on the site. This is why I have to make sure every time we write something on our titles, our videos and so on on the internet, we cannot use the main words. Like the thing that was made from China, we're not allowed to mention that. And look at that, I just realised that in the corner, the, the interview between uh, J, so RFK Jr. and uh, Kennedy on the Fox News thing. That's very interesting how you link his video to that one. Because we can't even get Fox News on the fucking television in the UK. Well, I can't anyway. I have to get CNN or MSNBC, but continue. But none of these measures seems to be proactive and doing nearly enough to reduce exposure to misleading information. Uh, the challenge about misinformation, as you know, uh, on a platform like ours, which is an open platform, we really do value the fact that it's an open platform. Apart from the people that don't like you, don't like their certain opinions. Right? You want it to be open, but you'll cut everyone who doesn't have the opinion that you have. Like, doesn't support Joe Biden or the Democrats. Fuck you. Uh, where that where there's a diversity of voices uh, is that with the ch your voices changing nature of information around this pandemic what is the new type of misinformation that might pop up um, uh, before there was the conspiracy around 5g and covid who would have guessed that those two you know kind of randomly uh, separate pieces of techno uh, technology and science would be linked together well, that happened in the course of the pandemic. So we had to adjust very, very quickly to change our enforcement guidelines. You say that these conspiracy theories are new and evolving, but a number of the ones that are still being promoted on your platform have been around for months, especially in foreign languages that includes in Russian and in Hindi, of false conspiracy theories about the origin of coronavirus or even doubting its existence. I admit the one where you doubt the virus exists, I think it's a bit far. But I like how she put the Russian and Hindu in there. Let's just make sure they blame the Russians on this one. But the thing is, we know it came from a laboratory, because we had documents, WHO lied, and plenty of the fucking facts, facts, actually came out. Not joking, it's true. Uh, for content that might not uh, clearly uh, cross the lines of our policies, we uh, reduce that content in our recommendations. Uh, it and this is where the blacklists come in. Do they remember when they did the blacklist on YouTube? Oh, uh, sorry, fate, uh, Google. And that guy in Project Veritas, you much watch, much watch them. And the video where the guy talks about the blacklistings. You're not allowed, these are censoring certain parts of information. Fuck you for doing that. So if it's borderline content in nature, because as I said, misinformation can be murky, but we still want to reduce the exposure to it. YouTube says it's removed millions of videos containing misinformation from the platform. In many instances... You should be allowing everyone to have the freedom. And here's the fucking Lagan thing in the corner. Crazy that. Weird. Um, yeah, it, it's a bit weird how you say that. But the thing is, it's freedom of the American press that gets mostly affected. I mean, we... It's a public platform. Everyone should have a right to their opinion, as long as it doesn't promote hatred. But if it's truth, you cannot censor that. That is not your fucking right. You might be a publisher, or you might be a platform. You have to decide which fucking one you are, because you can say one thing and react to the other. Don't lie like that. Or anyone has viewed them at all. But there have been numerous examples of videos promoting false claims and conspiracy theories about coronavirus, especially in foreign languages. And those have stayed online for months, accumulating hundreds of thousands of... So is 9-11 conspiracies, but nobody shuts them up, do they? ...views. The Mozilla Foundation behind the Firefox browser has decided to act. 
This week it's released a new extension for both Chrome and Firefox called Regrets Reporter. The idea is the user can report any recommended content that they found unsavoury. That's not good because, oh, really? From the title there, I am not fucking leading that, but look, all anti LGBTQ content. It could be a fucking cat and it will get banned. Fuck you. Mozilla says this helps crowdsource research into YouTube's recommendation problem and it. Well, you shouldn't be recommending videos. Everyone should have the freedom to look at their own research and watch videos that they like. That's why I made sure I had different videos uh, going from left and right wing sources so I can get both views of the argument, like the Brianna Taylor incident in Louisville. You can't get the same source information from one side. Left side and right side, you must get both to understand the story. That's the worst, the first fucking thing of journalism. Learn it. It can force YouTube to become more transparent about how its algorithm works. I think that YouTube's algorithm is really one of the most uh, opaque ones out of all of the, the platforms out there, which is why they have a lot more work to do. So YouTube... They're the fucking worst. They are one of the worst ones to deal with. Because they're the ones that people actually lose fucking money on if they actually get make a good profit from their YouTube channels. I fucking know that. Um, has come out with a lot of statistics like saying that they have increased, uh, introduced policy changes that have worked to inc uh, decrease recommendations of borderline content by upwards of 70%. But the problem is that there's really no way to verify whether or not this is the case without involving the public, without involving, you know, uh, researchers, sociologists, people who have knowledge that goes beyond just the boardrooms of Silicon Valley, that together we're better able to solve this problem of, you know, misinformation surfacing in recommendations. And if before you go at Dr. Lassad or Lashad, um, he's actually quite legit when you listen to him talk about stuff, but then again, you're just targeting this guy because he's just that big on your certain little video here. There's guys who's worse talking about than this guy, but everyone is allowed their opinion and you're not allowed to publicly shame one person for that exact reason. But then again, I could see me doing that, but then the thing is I've a right to review someone else's content. Well, I fucked my own argument up there, didn't I? Well, we're not going to watch any more of that. So thank you guys for watching the video. I want to know what you thought about that. I thought that was pretty disturbing from the BBC to call people conspiracy theorists that were at London. I didn't even realise it was long for this long. It's like nearly 18 minutes on this video. But the fact that they're going to take censorship to this degree and they want to make sure things are better and this is just a BBC video from the click. I tell you something, guys. This is very disturbing news, and I don't like how they reviewed the uh, doctor thingy there. Um, I just changed my mind about what I said back there. Well, I like how they targeted him for one reason. They didn't like his opinions. But if you guys like the content on here, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I'm just going to repeat myself again in the end of this video. But make sure you keep watching more because we want to make sure we tell the truth. Not their truth. Not the media's truth. The truth. The truth of the world. Thank you. So guys, thank you for watching this video straight to the very end. So I must have done something like that you've been able to watch this piece of shit long enough. So thank you guys for watching this video right to the end. And if you want to support my channel in any other way, because we are planning to go big on this channel. We are planning to make sure the left knows us. Make sure the cancel culture recognizes we are threat. Like me and many other creators, our voices are being silenced every and each day. So we must make sure we stand out to the cloud. And I am going to make sure my voice and freedom of speech is going to be there too. And if you want to help me support this, we are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Parler and Patreon. We're also on BitChute and we also have our own website. So if you want to know any special details, make sure you click onto the Parler app and the BitChute so we can get more content on this for the special members on those pages. 
and you get to see more events about what I'm doing. It's going to be a lot of interesting stuff you get to see on those things. So make sure you sign up to all these different pages where you want to get to see what I'm doing. And we could get a lot of interesting stuff going on here, guys. So thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one. And remember, hail the Empire.